Uh, again, thank you so much for joining in today. My name is Brenda Tapp. I'm the National Training Manager with School Innovations and Achievement. Um, and I'm going to get it kicked off and we're going to go over to our introductions. So this year we know is primed to be another year of challenges for our educators from staff and teacher shortages, ongoing COVID cases, to board elections, um, all while trying to help our students uh, rebound academically. If you've struggled to boost engagement, build community access, our community across the campuses or develop positive relationships, you're in the right place today. So I'm glad you were able to make it. So in this webinar, equity and engagement leaders from Joliet School uh, Public Schools uh, will share strategies on implementing. They're really gonna be the, the prime speakers in this webinar because I want them to share their story and their experience. Our goal is that you'll take away best, some best practices and strategies to positively engage stakeholders, increase learning time and get students back on track. Uh, we will use the Q&A for questions and answers. If time permits at the end, we'll go over those questions and answers together. And if we don't have time, well, as follow up, you, you will all receive a recording um, of our webinar today, as well as those answers to the Q&A. But we'll try to leave time so we can answer any of those questions along the way. Again, you'll just utilize that Q&A um, button on your Zoom. All right, without further ado, let's get started on our introductions. All right, so um, first of all, again, I'm Brenda Tapp. I'm with SINA National Training Manager. I also have my colleague, um, Justin Marlowe. He is our Regional Account Man Manager out in the Midwest. Um, and I have the extreme pleasure of introducing one of my favorite people, Dr. Uh, Teresa Rouse from the Joliet School District. She's been uh, superintendent there for over seven years. Uh, she's a true leader. And what I love about Dr. Rouse is not only her dedication, she's unrelenting and through all of this the past few years and before and after I know she's been able to keep a sense of humor and keep her spirits high on her team and promoting um, a positive environment for, for their team. But when others want to cry, she's keeping them laughing. So I absolutely love that. Dr. Rouse, would you like to introduce your team? Thank you, Brenda. Yeah, there's, I always figure I should probably have been a stand-up comedian sometimes, but it's all good. You know, so rather than trying to figure out if everybody is in um, afternoon or morning, we'll just go with happy hump day. It works, <laughs> right? Okay, so my name is Dr. Teresa Rouse. This is my seventh year here in Joliet um, um, as superintendent and um, loving everything that we have going on in the district. And for introduction's sake, from our Equity and Student Services Division, I have with us today Dr. Sunny McNeil, who's our Assistant Superintendent, and Mr. Dwayne Williams, who's our Director um, in that division. And both of them have all of the great answers you're going to be looking for today, um, and we'll continue through our, our content as we, as we work through this hour. And so thankful everybody's here to join us. Great. And Dr. Rouse, can you tell us a little bit about your district? What makes you guys stand apart? You know, I think I think there's a lot of things that make us stand out as a as a, a unique and special place, um, and that's a lot to say for our our the makeup of our district uh, as far as our students and our staff. We're about 65% Hispanic, 22% African American, the rest white or other. We're the third largest elementary school district in the state of Illinois. Um, so we don't have high schools. So those of you who do have high schools, God bless you. But that's not our that's not our vision and mission. Um, we're we're all about the pre-K through eighth grade. Um, we've got one early childhood center, 15 elementary schools, four junior highs, and one alternative program. And um, you know, we basically we have students uh, roughly about 9,500, 9,600 across 21 campuses. Um, it's a busy place but it's an amazing place where we're working to meet every student's need um, through our equity program and our focus on equity, but also just making certain that everyone has exactly what they need to be successful in our district. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna just do a quick introduction of who we are. Um, so School Innovations and Achievement, uh, we are the creator of award-winning software. I, I, our district partners, our campuses absolutely love our software tool, but it goes beyond that. Um, so we are not only providing software to our school districts to help improve attendance, um, protecting school funding, closing that achievement gap. Um, Joliet uh, has, is going to their second year with us, and we thought we wanted to share their story and their experience with you and what they've seen since implementing a systems approach to attacking attendance, right, and getting those kids back on track and where they need to be. Uh, we've been uh, working on attendance or working with attendance, improving attendance for over for 20 years. Uh, currently work with 
uh, over 2 million students. So we've been around a while. We know what we're doing and we've been perfecting that. So today we'll be talking about that a little bit. I'm gonna have Justin talk just a little bit more in detail. I just wanna have, give you guys kind of an overview of who we are and what we're about. We're really about partnering with our districts. Um, I, I was cringe when I hear the word vendor because I tr we truly see ourselves as a part of your district um, once implemented. Justin, Thank what can you, you tell us? Yes, thank you, Brenda. Um, when we take a look at this uh, pyramid here and the um, achievement initiative, a couple things I just want to point out. Down at the bottom, tier one, universal interventions. Uh, we're going to talk about this a little later, but these are interventions for those students who are have uh, excused absence, unexcused, tardy, um, as well as a welcome letter from the superintendent. And these are those touch points that go out to those students so that we can prevent them from becoming chronic um, when it comes to absenteeism. Our tier two and tier three are those positive touch points where we're sending out different types of communication to those students. And this is all students, um, whether it's about life skills, um, college and career readiness, or just a simple, hey, we have the holiday season come up. We're really looking forward uh, to seeing you guys after the first of the year. So um, tier one, again, for those students who are preventing becoming chronic, tier two, tier three, are more of those positive touch points. Awesome, thank you so much for that. Now you may be wondering, why do we need a systems approach? Why do we need a, a program to help us, uh, help us with attendance? I'm gonna show you a couple just reasons why. Um, we know that because of the pandemic, there is a new bubble. Um, not necessarily a great bubble, <laughs> but there's a bubble. When we think about this year's 12th graders, if you have those high schoolers on your campus, uh, those 12th graders, if we think back and reflect over the past several years, the last normal year of school they had, and normal, I don't know what year is normal, right? The most normal year of school um, for those students was at eighth grade. That was pre-COVID, pre-face mask quarantine, self social distancing, right? That normal. If you look at your current eighth graders, those ones that are preparing to go into high school, their last normal year was fourth grade. And when we look at our, our, our third graders, which are now in the third, fourth year of school, they've never known school um, without all of these uh, quarantine factors and face masks and social distancing. They've never had that normalcy. So these kids are transitioning through your district. The most important thing that we can do is make sure that they're here every day because we've got some recovery um, to, with these students to get them back on track as far as social skills, interacting with each other. We know there's anxiety issues. So how do we, we re reset that? Um, and, and thinking about the impact. So how many of our students will be reading by third grade, right? Because we know that chronic absenteeism greatly impacts that. Um, also, we have, because we do work nationwide, we've been tracking attendance nationwide for our A2A partners. Um, and so what we've seen is back in 2019-20, right before the schools closed down nationwide, we saw the chronic rate at about 13.6%. And if we look at where we ended the last school year, the average was 29.6. So almost tripled in the past three years. And another thing we look at is not just our chronic students, which is reflected in the red, those are those percentages. I'm also looking over to the left where we look at the students who typically had really good attendance. So our students who had excellent attendance showed up almost every day. A few years ago, 21% of those students were showing up almost every single day versus just 8% this last school year. And we know there's many factors and many reasons for that. But what we also know is that bad habits have been learned um, and good attendance habits haven't been, haven't been um, learned by our families because they really haven't had the opportunity. Um, so this is one thing to consider as you go in. Your data may look something like this where your chronic absenteeism isn't right where we want it to be. Um, when we take a snapshot at the first 30 days of the school year this year nationwide, it's not reflected here on the slide, uh, we're down to about 25%. So it's getting a little bit better as far as chronic absenteeism, but nowhere near where we need to be or wanna be. So we've got some serious work ahead of us. And we know that missing school has a, a long-term impact on our students. Um, you think back to, or think to your parents and, and even yourselves, just a couple of days here, you know, we're gonna keep, keep take an extra Friday off for my child or for my student, right? I'm gonna take this day, an extra day here or there. Those days really add up very, very easily. So if we look at a student who misses four days per quarter, which is 16 days per year, that happens every year they're missing over a year over their whole educational experience, a year of schooling just by missing those few days every um, every year, right? And it adds up very quickly. And even being, on, being late uh, also reflects a huge amount of lost learning time. So what can we do to help with that um, is to make sure and ensure that we're communicating with our families so that they understand the importance of showing up and how that time really does add up. 
All right, so I want to ask some questions instead of me talking all the time. Um, so I'm going to throw this over to the Juliet team. Um, so I know that we've seen kind of the impact of the pandemic and we have these new opportunities ahead of us. Uh, I want to take a step back. So what problems were you trying to solve? And now that you've implemented a systems approach, has and how has this helped you with your schools, uh, with what your schools are up against? So how does that systems approach help? What were you trying to solve? Go ahead, Dr. McNeil. <laughs> so <laughs> what we were trying to do is a couple things. One, we know that we need students in school to learn. Everything we do is for student achievement. Um, so we're always trying to figure out how we can improve our academic outcomes. And one of the things that play into that um, is attendance, obviously. And so what we were trying to do is systemize. We, we've had some systems and some structures in place, um, but we were looking at ways to um, to increase our efforts without overwhelming our staff. Um, we were looking at way, we wanted to consider ways of looking at our data that was going to produce some, some outcomes that were going to be impactful. Um, so the when we partnered up with A2A, it was, it was very timely because as I think Dr. Rouse was um, somewhere and she connected with a few people and we had already been spinning our wheels trying to figure out what are we going to do to make sure that we get ahead of these habits that we we're developing. And as we were trying to roll to a, um, you know, in on in person learning initiative during that time, how can we um, improve our efforts? How can we be more um, strategy base. How can we make sure that we do all these beautiful things without overwhelming the staff that we had? Um, and so then she ran into some partners there and um, the rest is history. Awesome. Justin, did you want to add anything to that? No, I, I think that was very well said, Dr. McNeil. Thank you so much. But, you know, one of the things that we think about and we talk about um, here in the last few years is one, you know, every school district has a, a SIS. Um, and it's, it's more and more common that we're starting to see districts pull up an IEP management system for those students who are struggling, especially within the last two years during the pandemic. We're seeing more and more learning loss, um, unfinished learning as well throughout the last couple of years, which has then pre presented to those districts of a learning management system of having to do this remote learning, the more of um, getting those students the information virtually. But I don't think what we really think about is an, atten an attendance management system. Um, that attendance management system really works well with all three of these systems. Um, it talks to all three of these systems. As Dr. McNeil said, what's the overall goal? Student achievement. If we don't have students in buildings, we can't teach them. And that attendance management system is going to work very well and complement all three of these systems. Great, thank you. The next question, I'm going to shoot over to Dr. McNeil and Dwayne. Um, since we have our um, leaders of equity, uh, I'm going to throw this question out to you guys. So how has implementing a systems approach supported your focus on equity um, with so many other things going on? Okay, I'll take that one. Uh, so obviously with equity, we're looking at individualizing our efforts, right? We want to make sure that we're doing what we can for each student to make sure that they're uh, attending school adequately. Uh, you know, using this platform is very helpful because it gives our principals the tools that they need to be collaborative partners with our families, looking at what the issues are and uh, helping them uh, with intervention, uh, providing those solutions to those problems. Uh, you know, being an elementary school district, um, you know, students who don't attend school regularly is uh, more of an adult issue. So it's uh, our our principals having the tools that they need, the information that they need to have those uh, focused conversations with parents um, to address those attendance issues. Thank you for that. It's fantastic. Justin, any thoughts for you for, from your perspective? Um, yeah, you know, when we talk about equity, it's process driven. And I think this slide right here really speaks for itself because any type of process that you have that is personal dependent um, really weighs on that individual. 
um, in the event that an individual might not be at school that day or in two days, that whether it's an attendance clerk or a secretary, um, you're going to have inconsistent processes. Not everything's going to flow. We we always talk about the importance of the secretary, and um, and I'm sure Dr. Rouse and and Dr. McNeil and and Dwayne probably wouldn't be able to do their jobs without their secretaries. When they're not here, things don't flow. At SINA. Um, our systems approach is process driven. So therefore, whether that individual is there or not, the process still continues. And Dwayne just touched on that, is this process with the principals is providing that collaboration and that communication with families. And so when you look at this again, personal dependent, we're depending on that one individual or two individuals. Process driven, consistency. It's going to continue to move forward whether that individual is there or not. Fantastic. I'm excited for the next question. This is all about the data. So this is where it gets fun. Um, so I'm going to cho choose from the Juliet team who wants to take this one. Um, I know we have some data to share with our friends today that are attending the webinar, but before we jump into the data, how are you utilizing data to address the unfinished learning that's occurred over the past several years? Well, I'll start and then pass it on to Dr. McNeil and Mr. Williams. But the I, and for, let me start by saying, Brenda, I appreciate the use of unfinished learning versus learning loss. Um, the realities of the pandemic, um, we, children were not allowed the opportunity to finish their learning from those years. And so we like to look at this, um, at our process as addressing unfinished learning so that we can help our students move forward. So we're not looking at a deficit model, but at the assets that they bring to the table. What do they have um, already finished and where, where do we need to fill in some gaps? So we, we utilize all kinds of data. Our local assessment data is critical um, to our success because we do have three benchmark cycles where we, we check on a, achievement data. So that way we have that to, um, to help fill out the the bubble of, of achievement data separate from the state data, which is just the one snapshot in time. And nobody, nobody depends on one snapshot. We need a, a myriad of pieces of data. Discipline data also helps us address unfinished learning. So when you look at, again, that notion of students and are they in the classroom or are they out of the classroom, what's happening? Um, we were remote for almost an, for the entire year of 2020 and 2021. It was a crazy time, but we um, were filling in those pieces and helping our students move forward. So Dr. McNeil and Mr. Williams, please add to that with the other data points that um, you feel are pertinent. One of the things that um, I appreciated about um, A2A is, as Dr. Ross talked about, we look at all of this data um, to determine how to support our students. Um, the attendance data that we had was is very general that's in our information system. And so this A2A, um, this platform or this system, it allowed us to take more specific data um, from the attendance side to determine which students are suffering and what that looks like. It's grouped um, very nicely. I'm going to be honest, when um, Dr. Rouse introduced me to the partners of uh, A2A, I don't know if I was completely a believer. Um, I was thinking, um, I actually did my dissertation on attendance, and attendance is really difficult to move the needle. Um, you see some some growth, but it's very small. Um, and so here these people came that said they can do these amazing things and they had this data that was gonna be nice. And I thought, ah, we'll see. Well, when we got when we got into the system and you guys and uh, collected our data and showed it to us, the dashboard is amazing. It's amazing. It matches, it looks similar to how our academic data. And a lot of times that data looks great. We can we can always disaggregate it. We can identify student groups. We can do trends. We can come up with plans. But our attendance data has never been uh, presented that way. And the dashboard within the A2A system allows us to do just what we do for students with academics, we can do for attendance. It allows our building leaders to really take that data and add some uh, interventions and some supports and some plans. Um, we're very competitive in the district. Dr. Rouse has created a culture of competitiveness here. And so we send emails and we highlight the schools that do the best in this area. And, you know, and, and people want to get on that board. Attendance is one of them. Dwayne sends an email every month highlighting our attendance leaders. Um, Dwayne, you want to talk about your email and that, that competition that we have going on? 
Yeah, well, and, and the competition is actually fun for me. Uh, I get very excited to see uh, when that leaderboard changes, um, you know, and I, I think healthy, you know, competition is good in our organization. Uh, it helps us get to where we need to go. But, you know, coming out of pandemic, um, you know, we created all these supports and we, we beefed up our, our SEL in preparation for our students uh, coming back to in-person learning. Um, you know, we were ready to tackle, um, you know, that what, what we needed to compensate for uh, students being in, in remote learning. Um, but the, the, the final piece was we needed students in front of us to be able to do what we needed to do, um, you know, to provide that, uh, that extra instruction, to provide that, that extra support for our students, um, you know, that didn't quite give what they, what they needed during remote learning. So, um, you know, giving those, uh, those buildings, those teachers, those uh, building administrators, the tools that they need to be able to look at that as that missing piece to be able to provide all the support and instruction that our, our students need in the community so um, it, it's uh, it's great to see that all of our buildings are, are on board with this platform uh, it helps with that healthy competitive nature uh, that we've um, uh, developed in our, our district and you know as a result our, our attendance is starting to climb Thank you for that. So with that, we're going to jump into some of the data and Dwayne and um, Dr. McNeil, I'll explain the chart. And then if you want to talk about how you use the data, um, that would be awesome. So what we do is all throughout the entire school year, um, we're uploading nightly from the student information system. We're looking at data. We're not waiting till the end of the year or a specific date to look at attendance data. So um, what we're looking at here is uh, Juliet's end of year data. And what we did is we looked at every single student and based on the percentage of the school year that student missed, we put them in categories. And so we track those that progress throughout the year. Again, this is where we ended. Um, just really quick, I won't go through every little piece on the, on the chart, but for example, that green piece, 15.5% of your students had excellent attendance, even during a COVID year, right? We had that whole Omicron thing happen last year. Uh, we had quite a few students that still had missed less than 1% of the year. We ultimately want that to grow. Um, and then we see that the percentage of chronic and we break that down beyond the 10% of missed year to 20%, right? We know there are students struggling. Um, how do you guys utilize this data? Or what's important for you guys when we take a look at this, the different categories? I can jump in there. Uh, so in looking at this data, obviously, you know, we're looking at uh, our students with excellent satisfactory uh, attendance. That's great, you know, but we, we want to look at some of our problem areas. So uh, looking at last year's data, understanding that those students who uh, were considered chronic or severely chronic, uh, the great thing about that is that we come into the school year understanding, you know, what students we need to focus on. Right, so those are the students that we want to address with their families early. Um, so a lot of our uh, principals they've elected to do things like uh, mentoring programs. Right, so they attach uh, those students to an adult in the building, and that adult is responsible for communicating with the parents on uh, you know the importance of attendance, uh, helping them with you know any other issues that may uh, prevent them from having regular attendance. Uh, motivating that student uh, with incentives. Um, so that's something that, you know, we plan for uh, early on. Uh, those students throughout the year you know, that end up in the manageable category, those are the ones that the principals want to focus on because those are the, the ones that could fluctuate either in, um, in the positive uh, direction or, or negative direction. So uh, we want to keep our, our uh, finger on those students uh, and if we're providing uh, adequate intervention, we can make sure that those students end up in the satisfactory or even excellent categories. Well, if I can just add to uh, one of the things we did this year, um, Dr. Ross had our principals focus on um, on their attendance for their evaluation. Um, so, you know, what get measured, met, monitored gets done. And so um, we're not just walking to walk, but we're talking to talk to, you know, we're, um, making sure that our principals prioritize attendance. And this, um, the way the data is presented, it allows them to focus on groups to improve the outcomes, the attendance outcomes. Um, we have principals that have set um, very high goals, you know, with 
with the knowledge that they have that comes from this platform. It's allowed them to really see, as Dwayne talked about, who these students are and focus on a group. So the manageable group, like you do with academics, we often look at our bubble kids and we can push them over to this area, then it helps these other students. This allows us to do the same thing with attendance. And with it being tied to our principal evaluation, their climate and culture goals, um, I think that we're seeing some really positive results this year. Fantastic. And we will get to the results that we're seeing so far this year as well. Uh, another thing I know, one of the, we, one of the things we've talked about um, is prevention. So it's important to communicate early and often and consistently. Whoops, sorry, let me go back there. I'm so sorry. That was quite the tease there. I'm so sorry, you guys. All right. So um, we know that um, preventing chronic absenteeism is ultimately goal. This is um, Joliet's school end of year um, data. And what we did is we, we have the ability to look at the students who ended the year chronically absent versus those that were not chronically absent and compare what does that really mean? You know, we talk about chronic rates and dashboards and all of that good stuff. But really, when we look at the learning time, what this chart shows us is by grade level from kindergarten through eighth grade. And I'll just start with kindergartner on the left. So if last year at Juliet, if you were not chronically absent as a kindergartner, you missed on average 72.3 hours of learning time. And now, if you were identified as chronically absent last year, 169.4 hours were lost on average. Um, and last year was one year, right? I think of the year before those kids also if they were chronically absent. So does this tell you, what kind of story does this tell you, um, Dr. McNeil or Dwayne, when you look at this, kind of what's our goal? Did you want me to go in there? Or? Go ahead. You can. I was <laughs> I got stuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, were, we were playing a game of chicken there. Um, <laughs> all right. So, in, you know, in looking at the data, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, they're missing a lot of instructional time, you know, which means that um, can expect or anticipate that their achievement uh, academically is going to meet meet their targets. Um, so we want to we want to decrease, um, you know, obviously those students who are chronically absent. But if you also look at for those um, who may be on that are part of the high school districts, uh, you know, our students who are chronically absent, the, the amount of instructional time that they're missing, you know, it, it lets us believe that their um, preparation for high school may not be what it needs to be. Uh oh, you sorry there. about that. It's okay. Uh, so we 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 want to rectify that. We want to make sure that our students that we're graduating are prepared for uh, high school. We want to make sure that we we get to these early grades as well, because those gaps continue to increase exponentially as they go along um, from kindergarten on. So um, you know that's how we look at this data, and and we want to address you know those situations there so that our students are more prepared and, and we can uh, start to uh, expect uh, and do the things that we need to do for higher student achievement. Great. Thank you so much for that. And I know just by um, looking at your current year data, I don't have the slide in here today, we're already seeing those. So this, this, these are huge numbers here, right? Because it was the end of the year. If you think about the learning time per student, um, this year we're seeing the same trend line. So our students that are currently chronically absent this fall in the first 30 days of school, have missed three times as much learning time as our non-chronic kiddos. So um, for Joliet, we know who those kids that were chronically absent were last year. They're actually identified within the A2A platform and we track the progress of those students as well. And right now what we're seeing is about 45% of the students that were chronically absent last year are chronically absent already this year. The advantage is we're early in the year, right? So there's still time. So some other things that we look at is when are kids missing school? So this is the school year for Joliet last year. I know everybody had just a, wonderful attendance year last year. Um, but what this shows us is by color coding it, the red days, high absence days, uh, yellow is an average attendance day, green is where they did, did good, but a pretty good attendance day. And I know we look at this constantly, um, the Juliet team and I look at this and monitor, look for opportunities, but I think, Dwayne, I think you were going to speak a little bit about this one and how you utilize this and what you see when you look at this. Right. So, I mean, obviously, there there's some greatest hits to reasons to why um, students miss school, right? So you're going to look at Mondays and Fridays. Uh, you're going to look at uh, just before uh, uh, holiday vacations, things like that. So we anticipate that students are going to miss days. So we have to make sure that, um, you know, we're doing some things to address that with parents. Um, and there are a host of things that we can do 
uh, within our schools to uh, encourage uh, student attendance during those times. But we also noticed that uh, on our half days, um, students don't don't attend school regularly. Um, and so we have to look at what that's about. You know, is it a, a child care issue? Um, is it a lack of, um, you know, feeling that those days are important for, uh, for student attendance? Um, and so when we look at our calendar, you know, it allows us to make some, some decisions as to, you know, what that looks like year over year. Um, do we want to make some adjustments uh, with what we do and then how we are encouraging students to attend? Uh, during those high, um, you know, absenteeism days. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. And let's talk about progress, right? So it is what we're doing working, I, I think is what we want to talk about really quickly. So what this shows us is a point in time comparison. So the first 31 days of school this year versus last year, what are we looking like? So this is that pie chart, but in a year over year format. So it's showing us that our excellent on the far left has increased over last year at this time. And if I go to the opposite end of that form on the far right, we see that the chronic absenteeism is down compared to last year at this time. I see that smile, Dr. McNeil. Um, so we're seeing some improvements. And we know this has not been an easy year for attendance yet again. Um, but we'll talk about some of the things that your campuses are doing to get these results in lieu of everything that's going on um, in our schools in the first 30 days, for sure. Did you guys want to chime in on anything on this? Otherwise, I will um, go to our next slide. But either way, keep going. Okay. All right. And here also, um, one of the things that we look at is this is um, for the first 30 days, we, we break data down by in so many different ways. Uh, we break it down, of course, district wide. We look by campus. We look by grade level. We look by our special student populations. Um, here's just an example of the type of reporting that we look at as far as by grade level. Um, one of the advantages, um, I think you guys would agree, is having the ability to compare yourself. So we saw that your guys' attendance, like chronic absenteeism is down, but how's that compared to everybody else? So that green line represents uh, over 2 million students nationwide and that average, the A2A average. Um, so that's what the green line. So you guys, lower is better. Again, one of the reasons I selected, we selected to, to work with you today, um, to have this webinar share out because what you're doing, it seems to be working. So um, great job there. Of course, we have room for improvement. Um, and also that national average used to be down to like closer to 10%. So we can see we're still struggling to get kids back on um, track. And again, that's because of those habits that have been um, have been learned or not created, unfortunately, over the past few years. And did, did Juliet team, anybody want to chime in on this one? Uh, for me, it's it's very exciting. Um, as I said, I, I wasn't quite a believer at the beginning of our partnership. <laughs> and so seeing that um, we can make some, you know, some systematic improvements, um, some impactful outcomes as a result of our practices. And this year, um, has been we've been more committed and dedicated. I think last year for us in our area, we were still operating with um, protocols that were in place from our health department. And so families were, you know, having to keep kids home. And so that attendance was very inconclusive. We, every year we try to find a better way of reporting, um, you know, virtually present um, in that level of engagement. But um, now having all of our campuses on board with this, I think we're seeing the results. So I'm definitely a believer. So this is good. And I never knew that you had doubts, Dr. McNeil. So uh, glad we made you a believer. Um, Justin, <laughs> did you want to add anything in before we move on to the next question? You know, uh, the only thing I just wanted to add was um, the slide previous to this one of where you guys were at at this point last year compared to where you are now. Um, this just shows the testament to all three of you and what you're doing and the investment that you're putting in. And showing that attendance is important. Um, this is a lot of time and commitment for you, for your principals, and it's starting to pay off. And it's paying off because you're getting students in school. Um, and that's our ultimate goal. In order to get a student achievement, we need them there. And, and this is just great. This is fantastic data right here to show what you've done over the course of the year. So I applaud all three of you for this and um, looking forward to seeing what the end of the year results will bring us. Okay, so this is, I think the question here for everybody is, you know, during the pandemic, many districts opted to kind of hold back on the communication regarding attendance, right? We don't want their kids at school sick. <laughs> so some schools held back on communicating with families and um, talking about participation. But in contrast, your district opted to 
sign up and do this whole thing right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, why? Why did you choose this time um, to partner with us in the lieu of all of these other things going on in the middle of the pandemic? Um, why did you opt then? And, and what was uh, the result of that? You know, I'll jump in and um, Dr. McNeil and Mr. Williams can add in um, after the, the realities of um, why not now? Um, this is, we have to, we have to have a better way to look at our attendance data. And what we're able to do with A2A is look at our attendance data, like Dr. McNeil said, much more um, spread out like our achievement data. Um, and during the pandemic, things were crazy. Yes. Was it rough? Yes. Is the data not what we wanted? Yeah. But it's what we're able to show that growth coming out of the pandemic. And, you know, uh, the, the notion of, I, we don't want to go back to anything. You know, people talk about going back to normal. No, normal is a setting on the clothes dryer and we're not going backwards. So we're moving forward. So why not start with a crazy year and grow from there? Because that's, it's, it's what we, it's what we have to do. If we don't start tracking this information, we'll never know the why. Um, and to get to the why you've got to have the data and that's what the product provides us. So I just want to show our friends who are attending today uh, what happened during your first year of <laughs> A2A. So A2A, um, for those of you that aren't familiar, um, we gather the, the student um, information from the student information system. Um, we generate attendance notifications based on the student's attendance. Uh, schools are actively involved in the review process. Um, so we all show our schools who's going to be receiving a letter, what letter and why addressing not only unexcused absences, but also excused absences, even during Omicron year. Um, this is a big part of your chronic absenteeism. Um, and we also communicate, um, Dr. Rouse does, uh, we push the print button for her um, on a positive welcome back. We're happy that you're here um, letter from the superintendent that goes to all families. Uh, so last year, a, a huge amount of communication went out. In fact, almost 19,000 pieces went out to just the Joliet school, um, schools alone. Um, A2A uh, will, takes care of the printing, folding, stuffing, and mailing and sending out all those communications on behalf of the schools. So the schools don't have to worry about that. Um, now, I, I would love to hear your feedback. First year, middle of COVID year, these communications are going out. What did you hear from your parents? And did you feel an impact once the communications started going out? Yes, absolutely. Parents, um, we would get calls from, it was new, it was very new, which it actually exposed, um, as I said, we were, our need to systemize, to do better with um, approaching um, our attendance efforts. Parents were calling, they were getting those letters, they wanted to know what they were about, they wanted to know um, the why, it was, it was um, creating some organic conversations around attendance, it um, prompted our families to come to us. So it um, the response was great. What is this letter for? Why, why am I getting this letter? And what is this about? And it was very different from the letters we had sent in the past. And that's what we wanted. We wanted to improve our, our conversations with our families because those were opportunities that we used to converse with them about the importance of being in school and, and re-strengthening uh, those habits around attendance. Um, so it was, it was absolutely, uh, it was perfect in, in how it happened because it brought more families um, to us. Fantastic. And Justin, did you want to add anything? Um, the only thing I want to add here is the save rate. And I think that's really important here when we, when we talk about the communications that we're sending out. You know, not only did we send out 9,357 welcome back attendance letters from Dr. Rouse, but along with that was the 9,631 absence intervention communications. That's to those students who have missed, whether it was three days, five days. Of those letters and communications that went out, 51.5% of those students did not receive a second letter. Therefore, that 51.5% of those students, we saved them from becoming chronic. And I think that's a you know, a big part of this. We're sending these communications out. Our goal is for parents to communicate to the schools and understand the importance of attendance and getting them back to school. And just one thing that I'll add, Brenda, just to another side note, and it may seem insignificant, but it is critically important. The office staff at every one of our school sites love the fact that y'all are sending out the letters and they're not. 
and we're happy to do it for them because that gives them the opportunity instead to use that time to communicate and connect and establish those relationships with the families. And just to give you an idea already this year, um, over 10,500 pieces have gone out in the first 30 days of school. So we've communicated, Dr. Russell, you have personally communicated with over 9,000 students and a positive welcome back. We're glad you're here. We got this type of letter. Oh, let me actually go over to that. So the welcome back letter, I'm gonna have Justin talk about this just a little bit. This is how we start the school year with our families. Um, and again, this is signed um, from Dr. Rouse and sent by um, the Achievement Initiative or A2A. Go ahead, Justin. Yeah, thank you, Brenda. So every year we ask the superintendents to kind of put together a letter and we send that out to all of the students, not just a particular number, but to every single student. Um, some of these um, blurbs that we have here came straight from Dr. Rouse and you know they're pretty powerful. Um, you know, one of my favorites is the attending school every day possible. Help kids get back on track. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing in Joliet is getting kids back on track to get to that unfinished learning. Promote student learning and increase chances of graduation. How important is that? You know, Dr. McNeil, I see a smile on your face because that's what we want to accomplish here. And then a last one here, and, and I love this one, is together we will succeed. And that togetherness is our school culture, our administration, and our families and parents. We can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. It's a combination of having both families, parents, and the school work together. Together, we will succeed. Um, to me, that is probably the most powerful four words that were on the entire letter. Um, but this is just kind of an example of certain things that um, Dr. Rouse has put in. I'm sure this year's letter was completely different, um, but it gives students and families the recognition of this is important. We wanna be here. We want our kids there. I'll just say too, the letter is a collaborative effort. So nobody's superintendent feels like they're gonna fall off the edge writing another letter. We all work together to put that in. And so I appreciate what came from the team as well. Brenda, you are on mute. So sorry, this is one of my favorite questions. I think I say that on all of them, but um, I have also personally worked with um, the Joliet um, school administrators. I think this is gonna be a Dr. McNeil, it's actually this could be anybody on Joliet team. How have you enlisted the campuses in your effort and what are you seeing? We talked a little bit a while ago about the competitions. Um, I'd love for you to share what you're seeing as far as your campuses um, enlistment um, in the Achievement Initiative. I'm gonna let Dwayne take this one. <laughs> I'd be glad to. Um, so, I mean, it, it is a complete team effort uh, in our building. So, I mean, we are a bigger district. We have 21 buildings, So, but they kind of operate like individual states, right? Uh, so they put their own sauce on things uh, within their buildings to um, achieve uh, initiatives. But when it comes to attendance, uh, you know, it's a, a complete team effort. You, you mean teachers, office staff, building uh, administrators, uh, everyone's involved in that, um, you know, whether it be uh, principals scheduling conferences with parents to, to find the, the root of attendance issues, to uh, building wide campaigns to boost uh, attendance, uh, to teachers following up with parents. So I think that uh, we have buy-in from uh, all of our school uh, leaders and, and staff members. Um, and everyone is, is ready to use this platform to help them uh, get our students to school so that we can instruct them the way we need to. Fantastic, thank you. All right, so one of the things that we look at on top of those letters that go out from the software, right, the A2A, we also identify when students are at risk and our, our school administrators need to hold meetings with our, we call those principal family attendance meetings um, to really find out what those barriers are. And we're identifying those students early, not waiting until they miss 20 or 30 days. And uh, this is from last year, the data from school year 21, 22. Um, so our schools document those interventions and we're able then to look at the effectiveness of those meetings. And what this shows really briefly, and then um, Dwayne, if you wanna jump in, you totally can. Um, on the left-hand side shows the total absences, the six weeks leading up to the, the parent family meeting with the administrator, and then the six weeks after the conference. So we can see if the campuses that are holding those meetings and documenting them, if their efforts are paying off, right? That's important. So overall district-wide last year, we saw an improvement rate, both you know 
immediately and long term of 45% for those meetings that were held. Uh, Dwayne, did you want to add in on the conferencing at all? Sure. I mean, the our mindset uh, when it comes to uh, meeting with parents and being collaborative is our same mindset that we have with students. When we see students struggle, we provide intervention and we try to resolve those, those learning issues uh, when it comes to attendance. Uh, we don't want to be informers, right? We, did, we don't want to just let them know that, hey, your kid is missing school. They already know that they're missing school. Uh, we want to be collaborative partners with our families. Um, we want to be able to sit down with them and figure out, um, you know, what the, their issues are and resolve those issues. And you can see from the data that when we meet with parents and we are collaborative with them, uh, that student attendance increases. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Okay, I think we have just like another question or so. Um, so I know that there's been staff shortages, changes in staff, changes in leadership, uh, district and at campuses as well. Um, what has a systems approach to attendance um, and the parent communications done for your staff to give them the capacity to be more effective at their jobs? I would say that um, for starters, um, our office staff has gained so much time back um, from not having to, um, you know, monitor that. The system is set up and designed such that they they hit a button, they release those those letters and A2A takes care of that. And so it's, it allows them to manage um, the, the post-pandemic struggle, struggles that um, we face in our schools. Um, additionally, it allows us to have some really good conversations around attendance. It's not just this higher level um, we're at this 92%, but we can look at specific groups and talk about specific students. We can I, we take those students that have been identified last year and say, we got to get ahead of this this year because we know this group of students is going to need more attention. Um, they were, you know, after the protocols that were in place by the health department, they continue to miss a lot of days. So how do we focus on those students and have conversations with those families and even have conversations with students and reminding them of uh, the importance of being in school? So this system um, allows us to be more, to you know, operate under a strategy, looking at clear data. It gives us back time because we can be working hard, but not working smart. And I think A2A has allowed, given us the opportunity to do just that. Fantastic. Justin, what, did you want to add in anything from your perspective? You know, I, I think that both Dr. McNeil and Dr. Rouse hit the nail on the head when they talked about what they were doing previously and how giving time back to their secretaries. Because when you look at this um, procedure right here, this is probably a procedure that you guys had in place originally um, of, okay, we have multi-step, multi-person, cross-departmentalized information going into the system. We have to identify the students. We have to review the information. Okay, let's make sure our printer has ink and paper in it today. Um, now let's get all of that. Okay, who's going to fold the letters? Who's gonna lick and stuff the, uh, the, the envelopes? Who's gonna drop it in the mailbox today? This is, I'm sure, something that happened on a daily basis when it came to attendance in Joliet. Wanting time back, um, Dr. McNeil, you said it as well. All your secretaries do now is hit a button and those communications are sent, sent to the printers and sent out on your behalf. Um, we mentioned earlier about the 18,988 letters and communications that we've already sent out. It took 10 to 15 minutes of one individual to take a look at where your students are, who are those students, and let's get it done. But not only that, but we wanna talk about how it's accurate, how it's, it's consistent. Every single building has the same consistency. There is no one building's doing one thing, one's doing another it's all the same. And I think that is the important piece here of, hey, those secretaries, we're giving you 10 to 12 hours of your time back in a week for you to do other important things rather than stuffing letters and envelopes and getting those out the door. And just quickly to add to that, Justin, the, the reality of the, the, the training that's provided um, is, is top-notch in quality. Brenda is amazing in getting that, that handled for all of our staff. Um, and the, their feelings of confidence 
in in the system. You know, I mean, I've known SINA as a company for years, uh, worked with uh, the company in California when I was out there um, and helped spread the spread the good word um, in, in California, was thrilled to be able to bring the, this forward to our district here because of that that staff time and energy and, and the, that savings is, is culture and climate in a building, not just time, because um, it really does help people with their, their whole focus and attitude toward work at times. And, and I, I agree with you there, Dr. Rouse, and I think the Last thing I want to say about this here, and, and it's the number that's at the bottom, the 51, 51.5%, the save rate, we save 51.5% of those students from going to chronic by simply a push of a button. Right, and those, I think the other piece that really helps with that is, the, first of all, the consistency, the letters are going out throughout the year. Um, nothing stops the letters other than the the end user the campus pushing stop on that letter most for the most part our, our campuses allow the letters to go out they see the benefit and the value of having those conversations but another important piece of that is when the letters do go out they look like they're coming from the campus and also they're always printed in the home language so the the, the campus doesn't need any to do anything to make that happen it happens automatically um, when we upload that data say so that home language is an important piece as well justin i'm going to have you just um Share some takeaways for today, some final yeah. thoughts, um, yeah. and then we'll check in on the questions and answers. Yes, thanks, Brenda. So, you know, when we go back and we talk about this from the very beginning, we know that chronic absenteeism is a major issue facing so many districts today. Um, we know that attendance is the number one reason why students are failing. Um, we cannot teach kids who don't show up. The three of you from Joliet know that, um, and, and that's the important piece here. We have to start reconnecting with our families as well. Um, you guys have already done an amazing job with that, not only last year with, over, with almost 19,000 communications, but also this year, 30 days in, and you're already over 10,000 communications to your students. That's amazing. Like Dr. Rouse said earlier in her um, back to school letter, together we all succeed. That I think is the most important piece here together. We have to do it together. It's gonna to take a strong system in place to make that happen so that we leave no student left behind. Um, communication is, is essential. When, if I could just chime in there just for a second, for anybody who's on the webinar today who wants to connect with us directly, we're available. Um, you can reach any of us, Dr. McNeil, Mr. Williams, myself, through our um, at Joliet86.org email addresses. It's really easy, first initial, last name. It's an easy, easy process. Happy to help anybody think through, you know, what were the what were the things that, you know, were, were special about this. What I do know about SINA and A2A as a product is that the um, the the quickness of response when there are issues. Things, things happen. They work with student information systems and really help get through those bumps and bu bubbles along the way. We, you know, we had a few challenges with our student information system, but it all worked out and it's flying and it's flowing and it's, it's really, really solidly in place. And this year, I think we're gonna see some really amazing data as the year rolls forward. So we're available following this webinar at any time to, um, to answer questions that may persist. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Rouse. Um, we absolutely love partnering with your schools and with your district. Um, I love the excitement, the competition that this is driving. Uh, you know, a lot of people think about attendance and it's not fun to me, it's my world, but um, I love how your, your administrators, even with so many things going on, they're keeping that core habit of attendance at the, at the center of all they do, right? Because if the kids aren't here, then we can't help them. Um, I'm happy to check in and see if there's any questions before we go. Um, just as a, a follow-up, you will, you, you, all of the attendees today, all of our friends attending will receive a follow-up and a copy or recording of this um, presentation today. Uh, we would love to have a conversation with you. Dr. Rouse, thank you so much for volunteering to speak with them as well. Um, Justin's happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you. 
go through kind of the details of what we do. One thing I didn't mention, I just want to talk about briefly is with the achievement initiative. A2A is the software that drives those communications and automates and gets the reporting for us. In addition to that, we're very big on partnering with our districts. I think I said that earlier. So not only do you get the software, you also get the training. Uh, you get a designated A2A team um, that will support your campuses along the way, uh, an account rep, a data specialist, uh, an intervention manager um, that are that know your district, work with your district um, from the beginning of implementation all the way through. Uh, we also meet with our districts uh, at least three or more times. I, I know for you guys, I meet with you more than that, but at least three more times to go over our reporting. So today you saw a very, very small snippet of Joliet's data. Um, we are all about providing actionable data, um, not just numbers for the sake of numbers, right? We wanna know who these kids are. So for example, on that pie chart, with those excellent kids we were talking about at any time those campuses can log into a2a click on that piece of the pie and have the name grade level all the details on that student right at their fingertips and that's where the joliet schools and teams are getting those benefits as they're taking advantage of the data provided and taking advantage of that time to connect with the family so it's been an absolute pleasure and i'm looking forward to continuing our partnership of course um, just on a personal note but i'm happy to check in if there's anybody who has questions feel free to answer those in the q a Otherwise, I will, we have two minutes left. Is there anything that anybody wanted to add in before we go as we wait for questions? I guess I want to confirm that we're not, uh, we don't work for A2A. <laughs> we really just believe in the product. I mean, we've seen the results. Um, as you said, the actionable data is everything. The support, the customer service support has been second to none. Um, your team has been very responsive. Um, it's actually, it's truly a godsend when it comes to looking at your attendance data and then taking the burden off of our office staff, particularly in a time where there's staff shortages and um, there's chronic attendance uh, or absenteeism across the nation. So um, I would highly recommend it. And there is, I am not being paid for this ad. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that is truth. And the reality is for everybody that's uh, still here listening, um, A2A, um, Justin, Brenda, the whole team, they're truly our partners. They're not a vendor. They're our partners in helping us to uh, improve our attendance for our students. So thank, thank you, you both. Dr. Rouse. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I hate the word vendor, just so you know, because um, I truly see myself as part of your team as well. So, and so does Justin. Um, absolutely. All right. Well, you guys, I think we're about out of time. Um, I really want to thank every, all of our friends for attending today. Please don't hesitate to to meet and chat with us. We're happy. I, we could talk about A2A for days uh, or the Achievement Initiative. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I hope this was helpful. We look forward to continuing the conversation with all of you and have an excellent rest of your week. We're halfway to Friday, which means Monday's just around the corner. So have a great day, everyone.